everybody, welcome to episode three of the Dream Guitar Challenge. I started with $500, I am buying and selling and trading guitars up to get my dream guitar. Move number one, I had a Guild Thunderbird for 480 bucks. Uh, into the second move, I traded that for a baritone guitar that I sold for 600 bucks. I then sold the baritone and I bought this amplifier back here. I am going to the Philly Guitar Show. So this one is moving. This has to go with me to see my friend Daniel. And uh, so Daniel actually bought this and he has given me $300 and he's given me a uh, Tweed Fender uh, Blues Junior. So I gotta pack it up. I was uh, just packing up and I almost forgot this thing here. So anyway, let's, uh, let's go to Philly. Look who I found. Hey everyone. If you don't know, this is my friend Daniel. Uh, Daniel, how long have we been friends? Ah, uh, since 2020. Yeah, we became friends uh, during like a Rate My Guitars episode, but uh, this is episode three of the Dream Guitar Challenge. Um, I told, I did an intro, I don't know how I'll film this, but uh, I brought an amp up for you. Yes. And uh, we'll deal with that later, but yeah. now, we're, what are we walking into? So we're walking into the Great American Guitar Show in Philadelphia at Oaks, PA. I'm I'm really excited. Are you looking for anything in particular? So I have a buddy who who's looking for something, and uh, he he said either a Telecaster or a uh, ES in the fifteen hundred dollar range. We made our way up to the tree line when the cloud fell down and covered us in white. There's anything on the label. I can't tell if it's an L3 or an L4, no. but it's definitely an L3, at least an L3 or an L4. Daniel, what's the story with your L3? What's going on? So with my it? L3 is with Nathaniel Wright right now, being repaired. It's had basically been completely deconstructed, and it's being completely rebuilt right now because the back um, was so damaged from a poor uh, restoration work that. Um, they need to graft on layers to the sides and rebuild it so it's the right size to fit on the sides of the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. You may recognize Daniel. Daniel was in my most, the best video I've ever had on my YouTube channel. I think we're at like 800,000 views now like on that. that one. I see a TERS. If you don't know what a TERS is, let me show you. But... Hey man, I'm oh. Jeremy. Hey, good to see you. Cool. Hey, can I, can I play this TERS? Yeah, yeah you must. You cool. must. You're not going to be able to hear it, so I'll just tell you what it is. So a Turs is a shorter scale acoustic guitar. These are made by Martin. They're a very small guitar. Um, and so basically it's like kind of living at G standard. You're like living at Capo 3. It's an incredibly cool guitar. And uh, man, this is so clean. Anyway, let's talk. I want to introduce you uh, to Alex. This is Alex. Alex, is this your shop? This is my shop. Oh man. Dude, you have some freaking cool stuff. Thank you so much. So, what's your deal, man? Where's your shop? What yeah. do you do? So we're at, in Central Florida, just outside Orlando, Florida right now. And uh, we buy and sell all kinds of used and vintage gear. It's all through e-commerce. We have our own website at flashfootinggear.com, but you also see us on Reverb and GBase and all the other e-commerce platforms. Um, do a YouTube channel, so definitely check that awesome. out. What's, what's the name of your YouTube? A Flash Flood of Gear. Okay, I'll put that in the description. Also, what's your website? Awesome. A Flash Flood of Gear .com. Awesome. Keep it nice. How much is the TERS? Oh boy, that one, the show deal. The show deal is 5000 
Five thousand. Okay, cool. What year is it? Okay. 1960. Oh, it's a '63. Okay. Dude, these are cool, and they're so rare. Yeah. And for the people that are into them, it's a very specific guitar. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one's gonna impulse buy the out of the white hairs walking around. <laughs> you just play some sting. Yeah, no. Their fields of gold. Daniel's over here working his magic. Morgan, when we came to the show, we called Morgan and said, hey, do you want us to look for anything for you? Morgan said he wants a Tele or an ES. And we found the coolest of 52 reshoots. It's an early one, I think it's an 86. And uh, we both played it, we both really like it, and it sounds killer. I leaned up to Daniel and said, see if you could get it for uh, 1,200 bucks. And then I heard him stand up and he walked over to the guy and he said, how about 11.50? And at 11.50, the guy was like, I can't do that, but Daniel is working it. So I'm hoping we get to walk out of here with a Telecaster. That would be an exciting guitar. It's a great early 52 reissue. Although, you did shake me down for another 40 bucks, but we'll take it. It did charge a crazy amount. Now, time to carry this heavy case through the whole show. I bought my buddy Morgan a 1952 reissue of Fender Telecaster from the early 90s, probably 93. So you, I leaned over to you and I was like, get it for 14, or, or I'll for 12. And yeah. then I heard you say, I was 11.50. I was like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, what did you end up settling? Uh, I, it was 14.50. And then after I PayPal'd him 14.50, he did change the deal. He, he said, look, I got so much in PayPal fees. And originally I had offered to cover his PayPal fees if he would accept PayPal as yeah. a payment method. So I handed him $40 cash. So it's a total of 14.90. Okay. For, I mean, for a guitar that easily sells for 15, 1700 bucks. Yeah. So. yeah. And this is an older one, it's an 86. Uh, he said it was 86, but the next guy that came and tried to tell us it was a 93. Okay. So we won't really know till we take the neck off. Yeah, we can take the neck off later and check. Yeah. But, well, that's kind of, dude, that's a big win. That's a cool yeah. guitar, and uh, it is a bit heavy. Morgan will like it. Morgan. Morgan now owes me some money. <laughs> All right. 73 J50 Deluxe. Okay. Big square shoulder. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. You got a Brazilian bridge. Thanks. 
It's good seeing you out here, man. Dude, good to see you. That's cool. outside of the Penn State Main University in central Pennsylvania awesome. in the town of Belfont. Belfont? Yeah. Belfont is right off of Interstate 80. Okay. It's very easy to get from a major highway. Dude, that's awesome. Tell me about this thing. I, I uh, First year Southern Jumbo SJN. Uh, they call it Country Western, which is a designation for Southern Jumbo and Natural. Uh, 1956, crack free. Uh, actually quite a find in this kind of condition. So I just bought, a couple months ago, I bought one of these that's like very similar except many problems. I got it because it has no neck crack, but mine refinished back and sides, some overspray on the top. It's getting sorted now, but I I have loved these guitars since I was like young working in a the guitar Southern shop. Jumbo is my favorite model. Yeah, like if you get a natural one, yeah. uh, they go back to the the Banner era, the mid 40s, and uh, I'm not sure what the first year is. I want to say 1942. Yeah. But I also have a really beautiful 1949 and Sunburst. This is why I brought this guitar with me. This thing's so cool. I want to. Can I play it a little? Thanks, man. Tell people what's your what's your website? How do people find you? Uh, I'm at uh, RainbowMusic.com, and I'm also encouraging everybody to follow the Instagram at Rainbow Music SC. Uh, I have an uh, e-commerce website, but really I want to talk to you, send you pictures, talk about what you're looking for, and really show you a guitar instead of just some stock photo on a, on a website. Awesome, man. Well, I wanna, yeah, I'm excited to play this. I'll put all the links in the description. Appreciate it. J50 um, from 1961. I bought it for 1200 bucks from a guitar shop that I used to work for. It was supposed to be my forever guitar, but I ended up, uh, life got hard. Kids showed up and I was self-employed. I was working in a sales job and oil and gas and it turned down. So I had to sell that guitar and since I've been chasing a flat top round shouldered Gibson. I just think they're magical. They're so fun. It's it's crazy. When I play this guitar, I'm, I'm flooded with memories of the hundreds of shows I've played with my J50. And this is such a clean version of what will be my dream guitar that's now getting sorted with Nathan Wright. So this one is very similar, but it's much better in a couple of ways. No cracks, no finish work. Minimal things, very cool. It's only one year older, so unbelievably cool. Make sure to check out his shop. I'll put all the links, uh, all the links for Bill's stuff. And uh, man, what a cool guitar! I like it. It's really hard to hear in this room because it's so loud, but very, very cool. But look at this. All the original hang tags. The 1968 and 018 was 240 bucks, and a hard shell case was 67 dollars. So small would have such a big sound. Right? It's very warm and fun. And, uh, what are you asking for this? Uh, I have four thousand dollars on that. Okay. Know, that's a little high, but yeah. mostly because of the hand the tags, tags and the hard case. Yeah. The, uh, no size hard choke hard case is very hard. Absolutely. Dang, that's a that's a workout. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. We came. We conquered. We bought a guitar. Um, it's it's been really fun. There's so many people that watch these videos, and. Uh, came up and said hi. It was really fun. So, uh, now... Are you trying to check? The, you guys need to check out. Oh. Sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Yeah. So, the next thing that we have to do is that we have to go to Daniel's house and we've got to do some horse trading. Make sure that he's into the Gibson because he's trading me the Gibson, he's giving me some cash, and then that's moving forward into episode four of the Dream Guitar Challenge in which I've got some cash, some money, some opportunity. We're going to keep going towards my Dream Guitar, which I'm pretty sure I'm honing in on either Martin D45 or a really badass 12 straight. So, let's book it. What the hell? Dan, are you happy with the... Yeah, I enjoy the, uh, the Gibson. It's a good amp. 
Sweet. And it's like a quarter of the weight, maybe an eighth of the weight. Like it's, it's so much lighter, it's not even funny. This is a NOS Tweed Blues Junior. I got this and $300 uh, in addition to, or in exchange for uh, the Guild Discoverer, Gibson Discoverer. So I've now, in three moves, I've gone from $500 in cash to now, I probably have, I can probably get 600 for this, probably get 900 for the other, and, uh, sorry, 600 and 300 in cash. And I've already got a thing coming that's gonna happen tomorrow, so this will not be the end. Now, there is one last thing I need to talk about, I need to talk about this thing, and so this uh, is not actually part of the Dream Guitar Challenge, but this is just a music and friendship thing. So Morgan, uh, who you've seen Morgan in some videos, uh, he's become a, a good friend, and so he had an extra attenuator, and he asked, hey, do you have an attenuator? And I don't, uh, and if you don't know what an attenuator is, you have a tube amp, it's too loud, you can use this thing and it pretends to be a cabinet and it takes the load of that speaker, all the power coming from the amp to the speaker, lets you turn it down. Now this thing does a couple things. One, it lets you suck up all that power and then have it sound how that thing would sound just at a quieter volume. That's an amazing, helpful tool. The other thing is, this has an XLR on the back and so the XLR out lets me run this straight into a recorder and so I can run this into an IR and then it will sound like a speaker cabinet. So it's just that amp into whatever cabinet I want. So, anyway, music and friendship, that's the way. Thanks for watching, I'm Jeremy. This is the Dream Guitar Challenge. I'm excited for episode four coming really soon.